17s from Seattle, Wichita, Long Beach, and the Vega Works in California. Flying fortresses to us, but Baby Doll, Yankee Doodle, or perhaps a significant name such as Birmingham Blitzkrieg, to the men who fly them. An all-American bomber force prepares for attack. They'll be gunning for Focker Wolfs on the way over, too. These are the first published newsreel pictures of the new type flying fortresses taken on the occasion when several flights were sent over to occupied France to rub out an important target in a weighty daylight raid. At a British aerodrome taken over by the US Army Air Force, the combat crews arrive at the briefing room. Inside the crowded hut, Uncle Sam's bomber boys are told the target for today. Now in the first place, as to the target itself, the target is of great importance to the enemy in the conduct of the war. If we do a successful job, the progress of the war is going to be improved a very great deal. I know we're going to do a successful job. Uh, commanding officer, gentlemen. Keep the formations clean, closed up. All gunners keep a close watch for any enemy airplanes. All crews report back here upon return to the base. That's all. That's all. A drive across the landing ground in a jeep, and there awaiting them are the giant four-engine bombers which have a date with a certain factory. The occupant of the stinger, or tail gun, takes his place. The penthouse turret gunner and the two trigger men in the waist of the fortress also make themselves at home. A signal from the pilot, the motors change their note and the big planes, after circling the drone on the perimeter road, swing into wind and roar down the tarmac for the takeoff. gaining altitude and heading out on a useful job. Up there are Yankee Doodle, Baby Doll, Stinky, and several other nice sounding names. Beneath that cotton wool mattress is the objective. This is where the gunners keep a sharp lookout. The bomb doors are open and away goes a stick as the bomb aimer, bombardier in this Air Force, gets the target full in his sights. on fire. They're working on it with the automatic extinguisher. Three motors are still plenty to keep him aloft with the others as the squadron heads back to base. There's quite a crowd at the landing field as Yankee Doodle with General Aker, the commanding general of Bomber Command aboard, leads in the returning fortresses. Flaps down and a lot lighter than when they left. field is General Sparks, commander of the U.S. Army Air Force. As General Aker steps out to receive his welcome, we take you into the interrogation office. Now, Bill, as a commanding officer of your particular squadron, can you give me an idea on here where your boys hit this target? They bracketed this, the target on the left and the right, and one stick went right down through the middle. Well, Captain, we as we approached the target over the river, practically on the target, where we ran into quite a bit of flak, and uh, caught us in three or four places in the tail, and then wing. You got hit? Yes. Yes, we got a pretty good burst in our left wing, and uh, looks like some shrapnel in our, well, our tail surface. Nobody in the crew? Horizontal on the tail. No, no, no one was injured. Nobody hit. General Aker, commanding the Bomber Command, led this flight, and he may like to say a few words. I saw uh, some FW-190s attack some of our ships, 
I could see the their gunfire, and I could also see the reply of our artillery gunners. And uh, it was very pleasing to me to see how far away the FW-190 pulled away. And that's the Star-Spangled Manor.